In this video, we will practice finding limits that require a bit of intuition. There might be some algebra that we will be doing, but we will also have to use our imaginations. So consider problem number one. We have the limit of this difference. So first of all, just understand that uh, we can separate this into two separate limits. So this is the same as the limit as x approaches infinity of x over 2 minus the limit as x approaches infinity of 4 over x squared. So as x approaches infinity, this first term, uh, the numerator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The denominator is not changing. So obviously this term is going to just get bigger and bigger. It's approaching infinity. So I'm just going to put infinity there to remind us of that. Meanwhile, uh, this term, the denominator is approaching infinity. The denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That means the overall value of the fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. This is approaching zero. So in the end, that means we have a ginormous number minus zero. This is approaching infinity. So in terms of uh, finding a limit, um, we're either going to say that the limit does not exist Okay, because um, if the value is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, then it's unlimited. So the limit does not exist. Um, I think it is okay to say that the, um, the limit is, a, uh, is infinity. I think they will accept that, but I tend to stick with does not exist. All right, let's take a look at Problem number two. Problem number two is not going to require much intuition. This is going to be an algebra problem. When you have a rational expression minus a rational expression, probably we want to combine these into one fraction and sort of see what happens. But first, let's factor as much as we can. So let's rewrite this. The limit as x approaches zero of 1 over x times x plus 1 minus, and here we have 1 over x times 1 minus x. Before we go any further, this 1 minus x seems backwards to me. So remember this small shortcut. If we have b minus a, we can always rewrite this as negative parentheses a minus b. In other words, we can factor out a negative sign and reverse this subtraction. So whenever I see something that's backward like this, um, I'm going to rewrite it. So if I rewrite this 1 minus x as x minus 1, that's going to create this additional negative sign out in front. So we have minus a negative, which is actually addition. So let's go ahead and use this extra negative sign to change this to an addition problem. And now we can go on. So in order to combine these into one fraction, we need like denominators. I'm noticing that the right-hand denominator has the x minus 1. So we're going to need an x minus 1 in the left denominator. Of course, that's only going to be allowed if we also put x minus 1 in the numerator. On the right denominator, we need an x plus 1 to match the left denominator. And we will need an x plus 1 in the numerator as well. So now we have like denominators, so we can go ahead and combine. So the limit as x approaches 0 The denominator is x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. And we are combining the two numerators. So we have x minus 1 from the first numerator plus x plus 1 from the second numerator. 
scan across this and look for anything that will cancel out. You probably notice that we have a minus one and a plus one right here. So those are going to cancel each other out. That's going to be helpful. So then we have the limit as x approaches zero. And in the numerator now, x plus x, that's just 2x. And our denominator is still x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. We have a common factor in the numerator and denominator. These x's will cancel each other out. So the limit as x approaches 0 of 2 over x plus 1 times x minus 1. At this point, we are ready for direct substitution. So I'm just going to write direct sub. So the AP graders will know exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to have 2 over, and x is approaching 0. So this will be 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 1. So this is 2 over 1 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So there is your limit. Problem number three is very similar to problem number two. So we will be finding like denominators and combining into one fraction and kind of let's see what happens. But first let's factor. So this limit will be the same as the limit as x approaches two of uh, two over x minus two minus x plus 6 over, and uh, of course this will factor as x plus 2 times x minus 2 with the difference of two squares. So we need like denominators. So the right hand denominator has an x plus 2, so we will give the left denominator an x plus 2. This is only allowed if we put x plus 2 in the numerator as well. So now we have like denominators, but I want you to be very careful as we combine these. So we write the limit as x approaches 2, and we have our common denominator of x minus 2 times x plus 2. And um, let's go ahead and do the distributive property. So this will be 2x plus 4. But here's where I want you to be real careful. We have this minus sign right here. So a common mistake that students will make is uh, a lot of students will just write minus x plus 6 because we're subtracting the other numerator. The problem is this is really in parentheses. It's understood that we are subtracting this entire quantity. So with parentheses, it would be obvious to you that we need to distribute this minus sign. So instead of writing uh, minus x plus 6, you know that this is actually going to be um, minus x minus 6. So let's write that way. Okay, now we can go ahead and combine like terms and see if anything interesting happens. So we have the limit as x approaches 2. OK, we have 2x minus x. So when we combine these like terms, that's just going to be x. And then we have uh, 4 minus 6. So that's going to be minus 2. In the denominator, we still have x minus 2 times x plus 2. So do you see anything interesting that can happen? You probably notice that we have a common factor of x minus 2 in the numerator and the denominator. So we can cancel these out without changing the limit. So we now can write the limit as x approaches 2 
of 1 over x plus 2. Now we can go ahead and do a direct substitution without getting 0 over 0. I always like to write direct sub whenever I do direct substitution. So we're letting x become 2. So this will be 1 over 2 plus 2, which is 1 fourth. So that's your limit. Problem number four is going to require more intuition and less algebra. The first thing you need to understand is uh, when you're dealing with a composite function, in fact, let me come over here. If I have the limit as x approaches infinity, and uh, let's set up a composite function. So I have f at g of x. I am allowed to take the limit of the inner function first. So I'm allowed to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x. So I can take the limit of the inner function first, and then I can do the outer function to the limit. So always keep that in your mind as a strategy that you can do. Who was that? Problem number four is going to require some intuition. But first, let's rewrite this a little bit. e to the negative x power is the same thing as 1 over e to the x power. So uh, we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of the cosine of pi over e to the x power. Now just imagine x is approaching infinity. So that means x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That means the denominator e to the x is also getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But that means that the overall value of the fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. In fact, it is approaching zero. As we substitute this zero inside, we can go ahead and drop the limit as x approaches infinity part of this. So we can go ahead and write the limit equals the cosine of zero. And we know what that is. The cosine is the x value on the unit circle. And zero is right here where the x value is one. So that is the limit. Guess what guys? We can do problem number five by direct substitution. If we substitute 0 for x, we get the cosine of pi times e to the negative 0 power. Uh, the negative 0 power is just the same as the 0 power. And we know that anything to the 0 power is 1. So this is just the cosine of pi. And we all know that the cosine of pi is negative 1. And that's because pi is right here on the unit circle. Cosine is an x value. And the x value is negative 1 in this position. So that's your limit. There is no direct substitution for infinity. So we will have to use our intuition on problem number 6. Let's focus on the interior part of this and imagine what happens as x approaches negative infinity. So I'm going to write it down here. As x approaches negative infinity, pi e to the negative x power, um, I'm going to try to convince you that this approaches positive infinity. So here's why. Um, e to the negative x power. 
as x approaches negative infinity, then this is going to become negative, and I'm just going to write big negative number. All right, because we're talking about x approaching negative infinity. So that means uh, this is becoming a really big negative number. But we have minus a big negative number. So what's that going to be? Well, that's going to be a big positive number. So what we are really describing here, of course, is infinity. So because um, x itself is becoming a large negative number, but then the negative in front of that turns it positive, um, that's why we're getting infinity. And the fact that there is a pi in front of it just doesn't change anything. So putting a pi in front of this, uh, putting a pi here, all right, if I have pi times a ginormous number, it's still going to be a ginormous number. We're still talking about infinity. Now, if you're trying to find the limit of cosine and the value inside is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that limit does not exist. And that's because cosine is a periodic function which rises and falls between positive 1 and negative 1 forever. So as the uh, interior part of this approaches infinity, right, we're taking the cosine of numbers that are bigger and bigger and bigger, but the value of cosine just keeps going up and down between positive 1 and negative 1. So that is a way that a limit does not exist when it does not level out at a particular value. When it oscillates like this, that is another way that a limit does not exist.